The very first Manitoba Podcast Festival goes down International Podcast Day, Sunday, September 30th, 12 to 4 p.m. at the Park Theatre. Manitoba's podcast community gathers for an afternoon of networking, education, and so much more, featuring local podcast hosts, producers, radio personalities, taking part in panel discussions, and Q&As. Take part in this fantastic networking opportunity. You can like us on Facebook at Manitoba Podcast Festival. Tickets are just $5. The very first Manitoba Podcast Festival, Sunday, September 30th at the Park Theatre. Thank you to everyone who supports my dad's show. If you'd like to support Witch Police Radio, go to patreon.com slash witchpolice today. You're listening to Garbage Show, one of the first podcast network. All right, uh, welcome to Witch Police Radio. I am on a very high chair at the moment. Um, usually I'm at the same level as the people I'm talking to, but this is a little unusual. So if I sound, uh, you know, elevated, uh, <laughs> it's the fault of the chair. <laughs> but, um, I, I have shorter chairs. No, this is fine. I'm cool, okay. I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay. It's just it's, it's a novelty. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, so let's rewind that. I, I am here in the house, and I'm speaking with all three members of Bigfoot Yeti. Yeah. And yeah. just, to, I guess, to give some, some background, uh, two of you have been on the show before. Uh, on you were on years ago now, yeah. And uh, actually, both of you were on years ago. It's been it's been a while. Yeah, so a while. Um, I want to get into that. What kind of you know where you guys came from and, and everything like that. But let's just yeah. start things off properly by going around the table. Everyone introduce themselves. What instrument they play in the band, and then people can put a name to the voice. So start right here. Cool. Uh, my name is Paul Webster. I play guitar and I and I sing. Uh, hi, my name's Chris Cozy, and I play the bass guitar. And I'm Ian Peters. I play drums. Okay, and Bigfoot Yeti, how long has this actually been a unit? Because it, when we had both of you on the show at different times, it was both of Future Kids, like the two different incarnations of Future Kids. You bet. So, I know at some point Future Kids died. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if it's something that's, it, it was there any kind of like negativity around that or is it just, just fizzled? You want to take, take that, Ian? I mean, if it's something you don't want to talk about, we can just... We can just go with fizzled. Yeah? yeah okay. It just is something that just kind of needed to, I guess... They were, move into something else. They're, okay. bo- they're both really good cats, and yeah, yeah, it was more, yeah, musically and wanting to maybe try something different. Cool. Probably the best way to okay. put it. Yeah. yeah. So when did the when, it, how much time elapsed between the ending of that one and then just becoming a project? Yeah, was it like four or five months? And Ian and I kind of we we talked about it. Yeah. Paul yeah. and I talked about it and decided that we wanted to keep going with it, and so we figured, well, we needed to see what we could do with rounding out the band. Okay. And then that's kind of where Chris came along because that was a mutual connection there on Paul's end of things. Yeah, for sure. And we, yeah, we played with Kaylee for a bit too. Right. Yeah, I noticed that there early on. It yeah. looked like yeah, it was future yeah. kids and just then, without Nick. Uh, and then, right, yeah. 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 Um, you know, you get older and you yeah. get, you, yeah. everyone has lots of stuff going on. It came down to, we were practicing more and more as a three piece and okay. then it got to a point where it was just kind of like if we're going to do something and make a record let's just go for it okay. so yeah and i didn't have anything going on so it was perfect <laughs> no no and then we yeah, <laughs> it's super funny so uh con who's like she's sitting upstairs yeah. watching tv we love con yeah <laughs> thanks buddy um yeah she 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 knew chris because they both used to work in broadcasting so she okay. was like hey i have a buddy who we needed a bass player we desperately needed a bass player because yeah. I'm quite simply not that talented, right? To be, be doing both at once, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Once. yeah. <laughs> but it also, uh, yeah, it flushes out the sound a lot too, right? So, right. yeah, we started jamming the three of us in Ian's basement, and then, yeah, we started putting out more and more just kind of like indie rock, kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, like, kind of like yeah. punk, punky ish tunes. Sound was changing, and yeah, and we got more and more and further and further away from like the Future Kids sounds, which was for me tons and tons of fun at the time yeah. right like i just i i left another band and then i was kind of in a band called hey pilgrim right right then, That's right yeah, yeah. yeah so then it was um it was very different for me playing in future kids right okay. like I, it was like kind of i felt like a little bit like a fish out of water well you were like the new guy right you, i was yeah, the new yeah, guy yeah 
and uh, yeah, I had all this. I had all these songs that I'd kind of written for Hey Pilgrim, and then had written on the side that weren't really a fit for Future Kids, okay. and that's kind of. Am I uh, mistaken, or did you have a solo album at one point too? Oh my god! Yeah, I did, man. Did it? Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh! Yeah, and I failed to really promote it. <laughs> I remember hearing about it at the time. I see something on social media. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, and Kay- Kaylee, Kaylee sang vocals on that. Man, okay. that's only that's only last year. That's like March <laughs> March of twenty seventeen, and I didn't even you didn't even remember it existed. And well, it's like been officially removed I, from the discography. No, I was, you know what? I was, and that was a different. Yeah, so my. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the timeline here, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man. So that's, it was while we were doing stuff, too. I was, right? still, okay, I okay. was still doing that while I was in Future Kids. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, Jeff Pattison, who's the, the sound engineer at Home Street. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a really good friend. And uh, over the years, like, I met him. I met him through music, through No Label Collective way back right, in the day, right. like, uh, which goes back a long ways. And yeah, that's, like, what, 2010 him, or something? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, so yeah. Him, him and I used to just mess around in, in his studio and, and play so i had a bunch of songs like really more like acoustic stuff and right. uh yeah i mean for that one anyways i just kind of like showed up and i was like hey i'd like to record a record and he was like okay i'll hit i'll hit record now just go in. <laughs> and, and, uh, that's how this show works yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah so that one was uh yeah it was a bunch of really personal stuff that's probably the main reason why i didn't uh I didn't promote it as much just because I got because the content of it. Or? Yeah, I got a little choked listening to it. I still get choked listening really? to it, and it's out there, and it's like it's mm-hmm. out there for people to listen to. But what's when, it called again? Uh, it's called Hey, um, sorry, Paul Pilgrim and the Lasting Impressions. I'm gonna tell people to listen to it now. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we talked about. It's on, it's on Bank. Get it out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I uh, I lived um, on Carlton Street in a condo called the Ellesmere, like right okay. across from the Delnavere. Yeah, yeah. It's a fine street. Yeah, it's a nice street actually. It's all right. Yeah. Except for the one ways. I like yeah. <laughs> Goddamn Sam Keats. Yeah, just, yeah. Right, right, right. When he did all he changed it all and they put yeah. the bike path the bike path the bike path story was actually pretty cool. Yeah, I can't complain about that, yeah. After I got initially kind of upset about doing the one ways. <laughs> not like I, I didn't like there was no parking space with my building either, so I always Okay. And I drove this little tiny like blue Toyota Yaris that wouldn't I'd have like a new ding on the front every day. Of the back mm-hmm. every yeah. single day. Yeah. You can pick those up though and like yeah. move them. You need to. <laughs> Get a couple yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how we got the dings. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks muscles. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so solo so album aside, yeah. and future kids aside, where do you come into all this? I know you mentioned kind of how how what the connection is, but do you, what, what what bands have you been in previously? I'm actually I've was I've only been in Winnipeg since about 2003. Oh, okay, I'm from okay. Northwestern Ontario. And I have I have a friend named uh, named Lisa Saunders, and I've been playing on and off with her since then. I'm in another band with her right now, but at the same time. I'm also in a, I was doing two or three projects and then I got hooked up with Paul, I'm trying to say. Okay. So there was a posting on Facebook for that. It's yeah. true. Yeah, that Connie put on there and I answered it. So it was yeah, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good time. We had a good couple first jams. Had a great time. Three of us got together, I think, at first. Mm-hmm. We bonded over Rush. Yes. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? <laughs> Chris's favorite band is Rush. Okay. And okay. I, I've, on, I've only ever been able to, to speak to 2112. <laughs> And, uh, right, that can only take you so far. Right, right, right. yeah, yeah, you, you, it's a limited conversation. It's right? okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. 2112 cool. super cool. Yeah, what about moving pictures? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, I've seen that in the store before, yeah. yeah. We'll work on that later. Maybe we get, we have, we'll ever go play out of town, we'll just have the one CD, it'll be cool, don't yeah. worry. Is that like the secret direction this band is going? <laughs> is no, well, go no, but we, but we have, we took the keyboards, <laughs> we're not really in the band anymore, right, so yeah, that yeah. really wouldn't... I couldn't play keyboard and play bass at the same time, which was true. Like we're true doing the. Did you get one of those those foot the foot pedal things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe. Cool. Eh? I have enough of my own pedals right now, actually. It's I kind of cover like, like the rhythm guitar parts in a lot of the songs. You do. Paul's doing like the yeah. lead. Oh, really? That's cool. Huh? He he, pun- yeah, he punches through like we. At least, like for the record, I um I put leads over top of all of it, okay. and then yeah, I'm not like. Based on what the rhythm track is at given times, so, like we can't recreate it. So yeah, and that's. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And over. Yeah, it's changing our sound a lot too. I've, like most of the band. bands I've played in have had a couple of guitar players or guitarist and a keyboard. Or even two right. guitarists and a keyboard. So you have someone handling the rhythm part regardless, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's just really fun to just have a three like three pieces and one vocal for now. We might contribute later. It's just up in the air. Right. But for now, this so it's I got like a nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's got it's lots of space to move around for different parts. I don't know with Ian too. You know, it's awesome. We can do some awesome parts. Yeah, big drums. You know, big yeah. bass. You know, and it works out for they get that big Yeti kind of sound. You know, kind of like the name. And right, the shirt. right. I, I noticed the shirt. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, my you're... wife Robin got me this shirt. 
got to give my, sh- my wife Robin a shout out. She got it at a local head shop, which is no okay. longer there. Okay. And it's like, is that with the name of the, the band? Name? Yeah, yeah. Okay. like we were trying to think yeah. of her name, and we had a few different ideas. That's true. And, well, what's with the, the space between big and foot? Well, so it, I, I know. I, I, I know. It's kind of ambiguous right? that way, right? Is it like a big foot Yeti, <laughs> right, or is right, it right. big Bigfoot Yeti? I never even thought of that. It, 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 it's weird to me out a little bit when I first heard it. I did think about it. Yeah. But BFY sounds better than B. BY. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And it's you also have way more marketing you can do. Sure. Sure. You got to think, you know, marketing, marketing. Who said that? That's all the money's made, right? So. Yeah. There's ELO, right? That's a good one. That's all right, yeah. Light Orchestra. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. CKY. Just flows nicer. CBC. Yeah. It's true. And, and you know, Bigfoot's like, one. he's popular right now, let's face it. Right, <laughs> right, right so, conspiracy well. theories and whatnot, yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're into Bigfoots or Yetis or awesome yeah. indie rock, yeah, check yeah. out the band. I don't know why we didn't put Sasquatch in there. That could be like... Well, uh, <laughs> technically Bigfoot and Sasquatch are the same yeah. thing and the Abominable but, Snowman. Yeah, and Yeti. Yeti yeah. Yeah. I think they're all part of the same family of, uh, you know... That's true. What do they Hello. call that? Cryptozoology? Is that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're cryptids. Yeah, cryptids. Thank you. That's the word. Sam yeah. understands this. <laughs> <laughs> this. This is the root of who we are. Well, next we're going to name Coast to Coast AM, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that should be the goal. That should be the goal. <laughs> <laughs> right there, yeah.
Okay, so just to go back to something you said a few minutes ago, I mean, yeah. I, I'm still unsure if I like the space between Big and Foot, but <laughs> you <laughs> mentioned the, the Facebook yeah. post asking for someone to... Is that... The reason I, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I always thought, you know, I haven't played in bands in like 10 years, it's been a while, yeah. but I played in bands from like age 12 onwards, right? Yeah. And it was always just, for me anyway, like, I know people, they play instruments, let's start a band. And it seems like nowadays I hear more and more people saying like, oh, there's a Facebook post or a Kijiji post, a, a Giant Skellies, yeah. I had them on the show... Kijiji post. That's how they found some of their members, mm -hmm. and it's, it comes up a lot lately. I mean, is this a thing now? <laughs> like, am I am I just unaware of it, or like it just seems like a weird way to do it? Because I guess because maybe you being from out of town, it's, it's different. But I feel like Winnipeg's music scene is so incestuous, like it's incredibly incestuous, <laughs> that cool. everyone who's been in a band, everyone else they know is in a band. So it seems right. like it's just an obvious way to to find new. Well, members. I'm already getting sucked into that. I'm already starting yeah. to know multiple people in multiple bands. Right, I'm a very right. busy bass player and the sea same sound guy at different venues and stuff. You mm -hmm. know? And it, but that, you work to your advantage so you get to meet people and you get gigs. And That's you true, yeah. You. yeah. And we hope, I mean, that I don't have much of a fan base but I'm sure uh, future, future Kids had a fan base, you know? I think there's yeah. seven yeah. people. Seven <laughs> people's pretty good. I liked your band. I was, oh. I was into it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. did? Yeah. yeah. He was, it's eight people. That's a, yeah. that's a good question, man. Yeah, for, you know what, for me... Think? I don't know if it was a question so much as just a rant. Just a rant? But you go ahead. Right, sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I just, you know what? It felt weird for me, too. It, yeah. felt, it, it felt weird just to kind of be like, hey, <laughs> hey, universe. Yeah. Any bass players around? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 90s, you'd put up a poster on you the would, yeah, boards, yeah. like at the mall yeah. and stuff. Or at the guitar store. The, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 And that, 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 seems, music, that seems normal, though. Yeah. All right, I was hey. from Steinbeck. There was no guitar store. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was the mall, like, the mall, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might be able to get guitars to places sell Bibles as possible. Come yeah, on. that's true. Bible-shaped yeah. guitars. Yeah. <laughs> Bible, Bible guitars. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, yeah I don't know. Oh, you, that's totally true. Yeah. And Did you have multiple people apply, or was it just sort of instant? I think I, I had four. Chris, I was the one that showed up shaved and no, no. showered. It's, it sounds funny. I feel like I'm... Yeah, like, you know, when you put something up on Kijiji, yeah. you can get a bunch of responses. Well, I, I always so assume that Kijiji's full of weirdos. Like, I, I, it is. <laughs> I never want to buy or sell anything on there because I just figure, like, I'm going to get stabbed either way. Like, I, don't know I don't trust it. No, that's oh, full on Craigslist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. From Craigslist. Yeah. I still remember sitting there and then, like, BuzzGuy76, right? Yeah, like your handle follow me on Xbox Live. And I was like, like yeah, I... <laughs> And I was like, I was like, I was like, Buzz guy, and Connie was sitting next to me. Okay. Like, oh, oh, that's Chris. He's a great guy. <laughs> that was, He's that, was actually, that, that was actually pretty much it. Cool. Yeah. Which I I liked, man, because even even to your point, man, like it, it when you know people, it's a lot more. It's easier to yeah. get going. It's oh easier, yeah. Your, your sounds, like all of those. Get back to Kijiji. I've met so I've been trying to get different projects off the ground since I've been in Winnipeg. Essentially, mm -hmm. it's just so hard to find. Sometimes positions are like. I feel like it's almost like being in a relationship when you see these Kijiji postings. They're like, I'm mad at my singer, so I'm going to start my own side project. Yeah, yeah. We're going to only cover Blue Oyster Cult or something, right? And then after a while, they put the posting up. You're like talking with people online. And then eventually, the best just kind of fade out and you get ghosted. Sure. Like, I guess they made up with the band. That's how I assume it is. It's yeah. happened so many times to me. It's very frustrating. And it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of a weird thing. So what, how, did you, how did you advertise it then? Because this wasn't a band yet. Oh yeah. So what was the posting? Like, how, how do you? I literally, I literally wrote like a Facebook post. Yeah, yeah. Was just like, for and it was on my personal one too. Because oh, yeah? I still had like we had future kids or whatever. It was like and... I'm looking for a band. and It was you playing with a bunch of other people or something. Or looking for a bass player and you had a bunch of people in the background. So I'm like, oh, are you adding to this people or is it attracting? <laughs> it was it was adding. <laughs> But you probably, you got that. Yeah. Well, I mean, then this goes maybe to the next thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, like, Future Kids, I don't, from what I've heard of Bigfoot Yeti, Future Kids is not the best example of what the sound is, because it's obviously very, way poppier, and this seems crunchier, and, and uh, I don't think heavy is the right word, but it's it's more right. aggressive. DIY, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... I, did I, people assume that you wanted to do more of the pop future kids stuff, or did did you make it? I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of the app. No, absolutely. <laughs> I, Chris, did you even know? Like, and then not really. Thing, no, I just there was like a... you asked me. So you said you said, "Hey, Paul, can you give me some stuff that you've made?" So oh, okay. I, I sent you, hey, hey, Pilgrim stuff. Could have been, yeah. I sent you future kids stuff, and then but not the solo album. No. <laughs> <laughs> you might have mentioned something yeah, it's good, about like. It's a good thing I made that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't want to stop making music. Yeah, no, fair enough. Right? right? No, you might have mentioned in the ad something about uh, alt country or something along those lines or Wilco. I don't know. I was still. I was in a really hardcore Wilco phase. Okay. Actually, when I. 
Yeah, that's true. It's possible. And then I actually, and even when you asked me questions, I was kind of like, well, I really like, um, I wanted to sound like punk, but I also want, I wanted like country influence. Yeah, to for come sure. Through. Yeah. It's tough to and find it's... bands that are like that sometimes in Winnipeg, especially you think there'd be lots of like alt country type bands in Winnipeg, but there's not. And that's, yeah. And the, Wil- the like the Wilco phase or whatever, right? Yeah. Like the, Wilco, I know, is like super, super popular, and sometimes I feel like people don't like them just because they're so popular now. Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of bands like that where right? people just sleep coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like for me, I um, like going back to like Jim O'Rourke, okay, and Jeff Fay, like all that like traditional like Americana style yeah, yeah, guitar, yeah. right? Like that's that's what I loved, and what I loved so much about them is that they like they brought all these genres together and tried to make it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we're necessarily doing that quite yet, although we would like to as BFY, but we're trying to at least, we're trying to span all my favorite genres. Oh, I pull from a lot of genres too, like some of the music, like the sounds that I go for, and I, I hear in our music, like bands like, you know, Band of Horses, okay. or My Morning Jacket's a big one, I always talk to Paul, I said, man, you know, we have that variety. Like, you love like Jim James. <laughs> he has a cool He's voice pretty good, He's good cool. voice. He does. Yeah. I like He's how bands can voice. really have, like, a one, yeah. on one album can have lots of different sounds and still sound like a coherent album and a coherent right. band. That cool. takes a lot of honing of your, I think, your personal personal skill. The old country thing is, is kind of interesting, though, because Winnipeg has, like, a massive... Anything roots-related, there's so many people, so many folk singers, yeah. so many yeah. country artists, but it's when you get a little bit more into rock. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's kind of not as easy to find people who are doing it. No. It they want to be strictly funny. the Times Change crowd, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Where is yeah. alt-southern rock? There really isn't much. I wish there was. And I think some of the sounds that we play, I kind of try to skew that way in a little kind of that... I think Traveling Song's one of them. That's probably the main one, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of got that sort There's of... also, like... It's weird, like the you say has those weird E minor nine. Yeah, even it. like, like Princess kind of has a like a, a countryish type sound to it, which isn't on the record. But oh, it's not on. Yeah, it's not on. We'd the like EP. to make another one. And right, that's, right. Yeah, that's on yeah. just specifically for that song, yeah. which we will songs. share. Right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess I shouldn't mention any more songs we don't have done yet, but there's lots. I assure you. No, as far it's yeah, it's a good that's a good example, man. Because that one's that's one that one's closer to just like country. Yeah, like straight up, just like. I just played it on a five it, string. It's it's rock yeah. now. <laughs> with a like just with like a really fast tempo. Yeah. But when you add the different but, styles of like how we each play, then right. what you maybe go in with thinking this is how it's gonna sound or have an idea of what it's gonna sound like, it just sort of goes through the machine and comes up the other end kinda yeah, a it's little, little different maybe. But that's kinda what you want out of a band, it, it right? Is, you want yeah. it to be like filtered through everyone's different. That's the individual versions. sound then that yeah. every band kind of oh, And that's why it's tough to explain it. to people what we sound like, because you're just explaining yeah. it from Chris's point of view or from Paul's point of view. Well, you right. just gotta come on and check us out. We're really good. Yeah, sure, Chris. No, seriously. Well, I mean, for the to ask the worst question ever, like yeah. uh, what do you tell people it's called? I mean genre wise. Like if someone says, Oh cool, you're in a band, what do you play? Like Everyone hates that question because yeah. it's, oh, it's, it's I like, a rock band. Yeah. Unless you're something really, really straightforward, it's hard to do, right? I mean, like, and you want to also kind of place it, position it, so someone who maybe doesn't have a yeah. depth of knowledge of, of some of these bands is going to get right. So, what do you say? Like, how do you? We landed on indie rock. Indie rock, yeah, yeah. yeah. which then, is like the bro, largest umbrella possible. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I always, alternative. I always say that, yeah. So, with like an alt country bend, bend on it, right? Like, it's more. And it's it's funny, like, um, I mentioned Jeff before, right? So Jeff and, and his partner, Sarah, came out to see us at our first show, okay. which was... So we, we just started, like, playing shows, like, last November, right? Yeah, so this yeah. Was, like, long, long. Like, yeah. a month and a half after, and, like, Jeff shows up and watches the show. Okay. And I'm asking him afterwards the same question, right? Because we're yeah. still trying to figure, like, stuff out a little bit. And he's like, man, it's really, like... It's really... It's, like, it, like parts of it is really poppy and yeah. has this kind of indie sound. And he's like, other parts of it are just, like, kind of, like, dark and kind of countryish. Okay. So, I was so like, that's how you fit that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So that I, I was like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it, like for me, kind of like, yeah, it's like a collection of like all of like my favorite bands. I guess all cool. the stuff that I've grown up listening to, or I always come back to the same sound, same chord progression, same. Cool. Yeah. Does that? I mean, does that go for the rest of you as well? Like, do you feel like it is amalgamating uh, sounds at you? Why don't you oh, go definitely. Take, go ahead first, Darian. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say. Uh, like w- with drums, you, I mean, there's always styles and everything, but sure. it's not quite the same way that like a melody would be where you can, yeah. where you can pick a little more into there. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Like I have stuff that I grew up with that I've always kind of, you know, that's just my style, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then you just mix it all together and it becomes something different. Twisted 
wrapped inside my head I guess another like annoying question, but I have to ask it is yeah. um, like where do you think you fit in locally? And the reason I ask it now is because I mean the old country thing and the indie rock thing. It seems like there's a couple of different ways you can go. Like, do you think there's a possibility for you to get in and play with actual country bands, or is it too far? Well, I don't, I was just talking to my wife about this very thing today. I was thinking, you know, it'd be awesome to play in like even like a country festival in mm-hmm. a smaller stage if we play the right songs. You know, we would just, have some songs that would yeah. work for that. Yeah, so. And there would be fans that would be open, like, you know, this, the rock side's pretty good, too, but I think yeah. we could also do other rock venues, too. So it's, it is tough. I think we're still in the gestation stage, to be honest. Okay, fair enough, yeah. That's a great question, man. You know, we, we, yeah. no, we, we think about it a, a fair yeah. bit. Yeah. And, well, and just, you, you summed it up, man. Yeah. If we pick the right tracks, we can dial it back enough to make it sound like yeah. just country and put a little mm-hmm. swing to it, even like 3-3 three, three beat or and that's something like that, right? Or like... And sometimes, and depending on how, even how we start a show, which is interesting, like the last couple oh, yeah. of ones, how the songs that we start the show and how we set the tempo, I, 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 know, I know you know that, right? Yeah, but yeah. like, it can be very off-putting for folks that are just kind of like, what the? Yeah, it can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you sneak one in there and it's like, <laughs> yeah. this is, you know, yeah. right? Or if you walk in at the wrong time, too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Turn around and walk around. This, yeah. this yeah. is absolutely not what I was expecting. Yeah. You look up, is this the cavern? Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, Where yeah. Where am I? Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah, the last cavern show. That's a great yeah. call. The last cavern show was like just kind of like straight ahead rock. Okay. Yeah. We basically. Okay. So do you? I'm assuming you kind of will be picking and choosing songs based on venue sort of thing. Like. Yeah, or, but yeah. not to say that we're like evenly split between sure, like country sure. yeah. music and yeah. rock. I, you yeah. Know, it, it's almost kind of like you know, maybe a six to one split. Let's okay. Say. Okay. Most it's mostly like a rock indie rock feel, but then there's definitely that in, that country influence that. Kind of creeps in. You know. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I'm not as much of maybe of a country background that Paul like Paul would have, but <laughs> it's, well, true. it's true. Yeah, I slip it in there though. But it gets slipped in there. But then, but then I'll, I'll play I'll play drums that might not necessarily go with it in a traditional right. sense. Right. And will it still sound country? Maybe to a point, but maybe not to like the full extent. Yeah. I guess someone's listening for it, right? So yeah, you'd have to be listening yeah. for it. Yeah. Aesthetically, we have the Telecaster sound sometimes for some songs. Has that. That country sort of twang. The twang you know, yeah. I, I play a P bass. It's got the old school look to it, the split the single coil, and it's just like, oh, okay, with flats, we're kind of country band in this track, you know? So right. Yeah. Aesthetics go a long way, too. No, absolutely, man. <clears throat> so you have, um, is it an album or an EP that you have recorded? EP. EP. Yeah. So what can you tell me about the EP? So it's, uh, it's, it's a five track EP. We, we threw a bonus track in there, just because we want to leak that out, right? A little acoustic number. Cool. We want to put at the end. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, oh, wait, before, sorry, before you go any further on this, yeah. in the age of streaming, how do you add a bonus track in there? 
I know, right? Is there like just a long pause, like the same with a CD? Yeah, or yes? Okay. Oh, there's a long yeah, pause. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, how long is like, like, you A nice, like, a nice yeah. like 30 seconds of nice. silence or whatever. Right? It's like the green person's green. like, what? Yeah, yeah, for sure, all by myself. Yeah, yeah, all by myself. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest songs I think that was. One of the best songs in the album, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop, but it just seems weird. Like, I mean, because it's, right? it's such a CD thing, right? Or, yeah. Or, or, but yeah, Tool used to do crazy stuff. Tool used to, yeah, it'd be like track sixty nine or whatever. And yeah, yeah. What's yeah, a track? Like, how do you explain that? Like, how do you explain that? Like, you got to go to those empty tracks. Yeah, what's on there? Hitting, empty. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, Two seconds of yeah silence. Can you imagine yeah. the hidden track though on like an LP, counting oh, yeah. on the grooves and then dropping it? Yeah, that yeah. would be quite the task. It's true. Love to do vinyl, but so you can tell that we grew up with CDs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. How old I are have, these I guys? Have, I have a CD player from when I was twenty in, nice. the, in the garage out back. Do you still use it? Oh yeah, yeah. We I, all love CDs. I, and I still, I love, I, I still I, use I still all the time, buy yeah. CDs. Uh, did you? Yeah, me too. I bought, I bought CDs yesterday. I buy Just CDs all the time. Yeah. Something random because I thought this was this was fun for me. It was uh, like Drag City? Just because okay. I mentioned him the other day, like Jim O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah. It's still. Pushing stuff through through Drag City, right? And cool. Just putting out all this weird ambiance stuff, and I wanted a copy of uh, Eureka, and the only way that I could get it was CD? in CD format, mailed to my house from which I thought was Columbia fine. House, no, dra- dra- Drag City in oh. Chicago. Oh. I just I know I just I just, I thought that, that was so weird because he's he's held out for so long and yeah. he's never put up any like he's got Bandcamp and all this other random stuff, but. Anyways, you asked about the record, right? So they're, yeah, sorry, they're, I just five songs. The, the, yeah, yeah, five it's, songs. It's, it's five One, songs with a secret song. <laughs> with a secret song. Yeah, uh, we have two songs that are kind of um, a little bit, a little bit longer in length, right? you know, like four plus. That's more of that alt country rock. A lot tip. of swell to them. Um, and yeah, and it's all about the rising crust pizza, right? Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, comes yeah. to a, and then you let her down. And the other ones are kind of like, and I think that was uh, the first one I shared with you, right? It's just like yeah. straight ahead, my old four chord. Kind of punky text. Yeah, and it was definitely a bunch of crunch not what I expected with the Future Kids connection at all. It was right. very, very different. So yeah, yeah, which is good. I mean, you, I guess you don't want to be stuck in the the um, people assuming that you're always going to be this band you were in right. a few years back. Right? It's so good. Yeah. I have not been exposed to the Future Kids. Yeah, so, so you're not going to take any bad habits or I good habits. North, or, yeah. Northwestern Ontario <laughs> sound. That's what I'm bringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born and bred. Yeah. What's the North, <laughs> what, what, How would you define the Northwestern Ontario <laughs> sound? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Chris, let's dig into that for a bit. Yeah, what is this song? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we used to drive to Winnipeg all the time to buy guitars? That's uh, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I've been. I started playing when I was in Red Lake, which is just across the border, about uh, five hours right. uh, northeast, I guess, just a little million bay, and then drive north and keep driving north. The Highway 17 represent, <laughs> and when the highway stops, you're there. Right. You know, and I think I, I don't think I was the only bassist in town. I mean, it's possible. It might have been. How big is the town? Oh, but it's about it's about an amalgamation of about three or four smaller okay. towns. Yeah, yeah. About three thousand people. My mom's probably going to hear this and say, "No, it's not. It's forty five hundred now. Get it right." Well, it's important. It's an important decision. <laughs> My mom doesn't <laughs> sound like that, by the way. Um, sorry, mom. Yeah, sorry, mom. I love listening. you. Please buy the EP, mom. Um, <laughs> So we always come to Winnipeg to get our stuff, okay. to get our guitars. And, and you had a mullet back in the day. I had uh, quite the mullet. Let's it's pick on, that up. You can check it out. It's on my Facebook page. How, what, 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 this is, I'm, like, this recently? Or no, 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 no. <laughs> I, this is talking back in the 90s. I had a mullet in the 90s as well. Yeah. It was pretty good. They never went out of style. I don't know why Some places they haven't. Yeah, uh, I feel like it was a, fer- <laughs> a ferocious mullet, though. Ferocious. It'd be oh, quite the head of hair long. for, yeah. Like, it was long. It was blonde and long. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's the that's beside the point. <laughs> it's not though. Um, so I really didn't play that. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about music? Are we talking oh, about your yeah, style? Sorry, I loved your mullet, dude. I'm uh, actually, I don't don't get. I posted about a picture it. the other day. It put a huge smile my on my band, face. My first band, Wild Justice. I had a mullet. Oh, I did see that picture. Wild Justice. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I learned. It sounds like the type of band where someone would have a mullet. <laughs> basically, well, it's basically I used to hang out with a bunch of guitar players, and they're like, "Hey, Chris, we need a bass player. You want to play? Uh, okay." And that's why I started playing bass. Okay. That's, that was like 1991, so I do the math, right? So it's been a while. And uh, yeah, playing with these guys is super fun. I love playing Bigfoot Yeti gigs because they just get that space. Right. You know, I love using effects and using my five strings sometimes. Or You're a good bass player. Thanks, buddy. You're a good guitarist and a good vocalist, too. That's very nice of you. You're a, nice, you're a good drummer. And you're a nice podcast person, too. <laughs> <laughs> does, the, does the space thing come from uh, just the, the small size of the band? Like because it's a three piece, do you have more? Yeah, I played in bigger bands before. I played in bands that very like way more keyboards and stuff. Yeah, just being able to just do what I want and like just 
it's so much fun. And uh, these, Paul trusts me with just what he's doing these songs. I love. He's, he'll bring a song. It's like, oh, this is so awesome. What can I do with it? And it's just basically turnkey ready for me to just go, me need to go in there and just start hammering away what we think cool. sounds good. You know, and it's nice when you're on the same wavelength because like parts are pretty much how you picture them. I think when we start playing them. You guys do different stuff than I probably, but you're also like when I like, I wasn't just pumping your tires, man. Like I, I can only like I can play bass, but I can't play bass like you can. Well, I, I love the and you and your fills, can. and you also have like a whole like classic rock thing going on. Oh, thanks. You're just saying that's over forty, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's automatically yeah, classic rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was that? What was that, Matt, what was that movie with Matt and Trey? Was it Orgasmo? Orgasmo. Guy yeah. at... Rush. Sorry, that was a good Pesh movie. Mode is a sweet band. I mean, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. that was that was yeah, that was basketball. Yeah, it was. that was basketball. My yeah. Guess. Basketball does not hold up. I tried watching it no, relatively recently. No, basketball is too commercial. Orgasmo is so like DIY. Yeah. But What's basketball, that? they didn't write basketball though, so at least they just acted in it. So no. that's that's actually fair. good to know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how we approach our music is very DIY too. Like Paul brings that punk aesthetic. You know, for me, punk means something different. You know, for a lot of people, punk might mean like, oh, you listen to a lot of like Sex Pistols or like uh, gutter punk or all that stuff. And I'm like, no, it's like DIY, almost like cyberpunk stuff. You know, like just put it together, do it how you want it. And that's a lot of the ways we approach some of this music. You know, how are we going to approach you know only having one guitar? Yeah. Well, let's do this. You know, how do we approach do only one vocalist? Well, let's just play it like this, you know? So it's definitely how we approach things.
obsessed with punk music for a long time. Yeah. So like, which I'm not punk. Like, yeah. punk no, for me is all. like the Police, early Police, right, right, like, right, yeah. or the Clash. You know, yeah. Yeah. That's great, and the first two police records are amazing. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I talk about a lot of stuff that Chris doesn't know what I'm talking about. So like, a, a lot of the like the American hardcore scene, like yeah. the 80s, it's all snare drum. That's, that's, that's the best stuff in the world ever. Oh. <laughs> like Bad Brains, Black Flag, all those like that whole era. Is, uh, I respect those uh, artists uh, big time, like Henry Wallens and those Henry guys. Steve, Stephen Blush or whatever. Yeah, like, that book, the, the Tribal yeah. History. Yeah, yeah it's a like great book, book. American hardcore. Yeah. yeah, which is like, and it's just like and and, the documentary and, and, is also amazing. I liked it a lot, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like there's yeah. Just randomly, just because I was looking at it, um, I've been listening to like I I went for a very long period of time where I didn't really listen to Nirvana. Yeah. Like I obviously like I was six when like you know Nevermind hit and then okay. I went like gang, I, am, ga- oh, I went I went Gangbusters. No, I'm just kidding. I was, like, <laughs> I was twelve. I was twelve. I was trying to make Chris feel worse oh, about man, himself. Yeah. Did it work? Okay. Yeah. Well, Nevermind came out in '91, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was twelve. Okay. So when I when I but I, I just listened to it like and all of it so much for so long and then I didn't for like a very long time. But I started listening to it again recently, and yeah. I was, uh, yeah, li- listening to some of what what he considered his favorite bands. Yeah, something I was just reading. Well, like, you made that list. list. So can, yeah, the fifty yeah. top fifty. Yeah, it's a good list. There's a whole, there's a thwack of stuff all from that scene. Yeah, right, like the MDC. Yeah, well, like, all those SST bands and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, new puppets. Yeah, man, it yeah. was cool, cool stuff. Was, one of them was because um, there's bands that came out of that scene that no one even really like Butthole Surfers. Yeah. Was it PP the Sailor or whatever? Is well, like, they had that one hit though. And yeah, the came, one, yeah, Pepper. Yeah. Pepper, Pepper yeah. Like, that, yeah. Unlike any other song. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. But I really liked that song. It was a good song. Yeah. Everybody did. It was a hit song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of those bands came out of a weird time though, out of like the ashes of the '80s. Like, I don't know what we call. What were we coming out of? The aughts, like what? Well, yeah, it's weird. It's weird <laughs> to. I don't know how. You, I don't know if you can define what the sound is of now, like the '90s. Whether you're talking Post about internet. I don't, I don't know, yeah. Because 90s, you're talking about hip-hop, you're talking about punk rock, you're talking about metal. Everything has a very distinct, like, this is 90s stuff, 80s like for green, sure, even yeah, more, right. which is the production and everything. Sound. But, yeah, what is... Because everyone's... What got, is now? There's so much now. Like, it's... It's everyone, like, like post-apocalyptic Mad Max of music. That's yeah, maybe. Take whatever yeah, you got and just go with it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no one thing that everyone listens to anymore. I right? think so, too. I think because it's not so... I want to say regulated, you know, like it was in the 90s. Yeah. Like people just do whatever you want because no record label is going to tell you what to do because you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Because record labels are nothing now. They're just banks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They don't give anyone any money anyway. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> they don't even sign you unless you were already able to make... I yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Music. I really like what you're doing here. What's that? No, I'm just always pretending. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is rad. I could talk about this stuff all day. Yeah, it's a, that's interesting though. I mean, just because like I've been doing this show for almost six years now, and like I'm talking to people every week, at least at least one a week, right? Yeah. And um, the just the difference in how people view not only the music business part of it. But just how they consume music and stuff is so radically different. Like, if I'm talking mm-hmm. to a 19-year-old, yeah. they're closer in age to my kids than they are to me. And their idea is insane of what music is supposed to be and how mm-hmm. they consume it and everything. But then I talk to a 70-year-old, and, like, what I think is my thing about uh, listening to analog music and everything, they're, like, beyond that, right? Mm-hmm. Or they're even yeah. more technologically into it than I am. Like, mm-hmm. Fred <laughs> Petter taught me how to take a better selfie. <laughs> like, oh, man. And he's literally twice my age at the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, here, do this. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's... it's it's like there's no there's no um, line anymore, right? For for how music is supposed to exist and technology and right. everyone's just all over the place. Just think outside the box. You can take advantage of that, you know. Yeah. Think of different mediums and form for our music. It is lots of fun. You know, when are we gonna do like Viewmasters or something attached yeah. to music? A we'll track for each. Remember Viewmasters? I do. Those were cool. Still are. It's probably still I mean, they, they make you go while, blind, but, yeah. but uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I don't know if you find Viewmasters make you go blind. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so to bring things back around a little bit, um, <laughs> the album with the secret song, um, the yeah. EP with the secret song, is it is it coming out in physical form as well as digital form, or are you just doing the whole bandcamp thing, or is that Ooh. still up in the air? Well, we're gonna we're gonna press we're gonna press a limited run. That's yeah. that's what I wanted to. Limited. The last time that I pressed something would yeah. have been, yeah, with would have been with Nick and uh, Future Kids there, but I didn't do anything for the the solo album that I didn't, and I, I. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah. But it feels really nice when you have something mm. tangible to hold yeah. on to. And it's probably just because of what we're talking about. I think so, yeah. Because yeah. of how I consumed music growing up. For right? sure, like, yeah. It was yeah. always like I paid my $20 and yes, I got yeah. my CD or I got my cassette. Yeah. <laughs> and I right, and I read What's all of the liner called? notes and yeah. I consumed the entire thing. Yeah, and... it's tangible. Yeah, and when you go to a show too, you take something home, right? It's not yeah. like you just take a little 
business card and go type something in your computer. Yeah. You actually have a physical thing, like, you know, it's like, oh, I bought this. I feel this like is, you you've so, I've supported the band kind of thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Pictures. And what if you, like, things. use your netbook or your iPad, though, and you don't have a physical way once that gets recycled to get that back to the top of my you know, head just code. blew off. Yeah. You know, that's happened to me. I've had music on one computer and then you can't get it again. Yeah. Because it was a download code for something that's expired. You know, well, and the other thing too is like, what happens? I mean, I, I don't use any of the streaming stuff. I don't. If I want to look something up, I look at on Bandcamp or YouTube. Just something you know. I don't do Spotify or iTunes or any of that stuff Neither because I. mainly because I have all my stuff dating back to the mid '90s on tape or CD or vinyl that I've just always had. I don't want to keep buying more stuff. But my biggest fear for people who have these big collections of things they listen to streaming for, and what happens if iTunes blows up? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, like if Apple just. It's not going to fold, I don't think. But if it just something happens and iTunes is gone the next it day, it shouldn't be your only yeah. way to have music. No, media. no, it's it's scary. Right. Like it's just uh, it's all gone. Like, I'm a kind of a, not with you guys. I love Spotify, but just because I could hear and see all kinds of things. Yeah, that's cool. That part you is know, definitely just cool. You know, stuff you want to discover. They can make like playlists for you. They have great playlists of Manitoba artists. You know, yeah, things like that. Fine, but it's you know that's a free one. You know, what I'm saying, but like having that physical. A physical thing with you that means something. Yeah, it means something. It's, oh my god, I still have this copy Actually, of what you know. And I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down too. I remember, right when they were first starting to write like the algorithms that like you yeah. know, when you bought music on on iTunes or whatever, and it would be like you might also like. Oh right, okay, yeah. Was, like I went through like a whole stage where I would be like, oh my gosh, what else might I also like? And then <laughs> all, all, all it took was like two really bad. <laughs> Purchase it and then you, you have to right? show yeah, some right. restraint. I was like, we're done here. I we're do, done. I do not also like this. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. There's, I'm not going to, yeah, there's a couple of folks that worked at CD Trader for years too. Like, there was a couple that I went to nonstop. Yeah. Same thing. I bought one on the record and I was like, this is terrible. Yeah. I can't, I can't take any of his picks. Anymore. But okay, the difference though, if you're, if you're going to Music Trader and you get a really bad recommendation from someone, you can go back the next day <laughs> Which and I tell him to his face. Which I did. This is, a piece this of is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So it's more, more satisfying, right? But, but yeah, we, we, also, just hitting we, we also laughed about it, too. Yeah. And he's there like, I some... warned you. I warned you. Yeah. yeah. You did. There you are did. some records that you might not be ready for. True. Yeah. There are totally. some that I've had. I've gone back to over 20 years and listened to over again, maybe. And like, hey, this actually isn't half bad. Yep. You know? So, hey, hopefully Bigfoot Yeti's EP isn't like that. We want you guys to like it right away. Right. But wouldn't it be cool if 15 years later you someone discovered it and was just like, whoa, this, you know, really I hated cool. this band when yeah. they were around, but <laughs> good thing I had a physical copy <laughs> so I couldn't like erase yeah. it from my hard drive. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we're pressing it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you get people like me, like I've, I've been hoarding, I hate the, the word hoarding sounds bad, yeah. but I have been hoarding uh, local music lately over the past year and a bit. I mean, I have a lot anyway, uh, yeah, but no, I've been going to like... so limited, it's so cool to have Yeah, that. and it's so cheap now because CDs are like, people throw them away. So yeah. the amount of stuff I can find at thrift stores or dollar bins of like bands Two from, blocks, you know, early 90s to today and it's just something that got 50 copies made and I have this, <laughs> you know, shitty basement punk band CD that no one else has anymore and it's just cool to have so I think it's super yeah. cool so I, yeah. I'll I mean you know hopefully the collector, hopefully yes. your EP goes to people the physical one yeah. goes to people like that who are actually going to see not the value just, in it right? not like, just yeah. Chris's mom and dad to sit right. beside their copy of Roger that, Whittaker that's cool too though that's cool too like I mean <laughs> I yeah, my parents have okay well they used to have good taste in music my dad raised me on like Led Zeppelin and right on. all kinds of like far out there stuff um, my middle name's uh, Kale from JJ Kale oh wow singer songwriter yeah, yeah, yeah. Who uh, was had a I don't want to say prolific career, but was friends with was it Eric Clapton? Yeah, Clapton covered a bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah, After Midnight and Cocaine. Cocaine, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. yeah his first album was naturally like nineteen seventy one or something. I had Shades on vinyl when I was a kid. Oh, that's, that's a good right. I have the one yeah. with the box Troub car. Troubadours, Another Beauty. Yeah, yeah. He, he just passed away okay. a couple years ago. The record. JJ Kale just passed away. Yeah. yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's got some good music. So definitely bring some of that to your sound too. Some of that sort of country folk well, yeah i would i yeah man i would say that like i still listen to a lot of jj kale yeah mostly those first two records though it's good stuff it's kind of timeless yeah. i think so i think i only the breeze i'm over yeah, I'm the breeze. over yeah. 300 episodes at this point i think it's the first time jj kale has ever been brought Woo, up time. i can't think of any other time I've, I've, I've <laughs> met someone named after jj yeah, kale yeah that's yeah yeah it's an unusual reference we actually why well, we bought it it is an unusual yeah. reference and we bought it over it because yeah, like, cool yeah 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 and I was at my friend Ron's place many, many moons ago now, and his dad gave him, like, a vinyl copy of the first record. Cool. That's how it happened for me, and I was like, who is this? 
Yeah, nice. That's almost the best way to f- discover things. Someone just hands it to you, and you know, I mean, you might hate it, like you're saying, some of those ones are bad yeah. choices, but mm-hmm. if someone just like, you will love this, and then you take it home and you do love it, it's just, it kind of opens yeah, up Yeah, don't tell them what to look for. Like, yeah, have them just, look for just, just like listen that. to this, it's going to be great, and it's happened to me for sure with stuff, mm-hmm. and just, yeah, some of my favorite yeah. records are ones that people just gave to me and just said, look, listen to this, you will love it, and yeah, sure enough. There's been some bad ones, though. I've had some records people <laughs> gave to me that, like, oh, yeah. I got this one German prog album. I don't even. Like, I, I don't know what the band was called. There was a map on the cover. Everything was in German, and it was awful. It was like, and I was Maybe actually like twenty year ones. Let's do it again twenty years. I, may, I, I think I gave it away, but <laughs> and I gave it away, making sure the person I gave it to knew that I didn't like it. And I wasn't recommending. Be it. Be warned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> this. I mean, this. This, this could is, be a conversation that just keeps going on and on. And it's fun. It's fun to do. Yeah. 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 I don't know how interesting it. it is to listen to, <laughs> but um, back to the big space foot space yeti. Yes. Um, CD or digital release or EP, whatever EP you're calling release. it, EP release. When is it happening? Where is it happening? So we're gonna play Handsome Daughter. Okay. October twentieth. Um, we're thinking of doing actually a, a joint. So by the time folks hear this, it might yeah. be a for sure, for sure thing. But we've like the Giant Skellies. We'd cool. Really, we'd really like to play with them, and then uh, yeah, we're super pumped about it because yeah. we like you know we were talking about when we started and all the rest yeah. of it. And it's kind of like we hustled our buns off to try and make something. Ian's almost happy with the sound of his drums. <laughs> almost. I, is almost, that a rare, a, a rare occurrence? Or? It's, uh, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it's, it's too hard on himself. He snares, sounds awesome. snares are the hardest things to get right. Right. <sighs> and, a bit right. And I, it's yeah. just who knows what. But yeah, Oct 20. Yeah. So okay. it's a Saturday night, and we're super pumped. And cool. It's been a while since I've played at the Handsome Daughter. And then Fries. Anyway. fries. I've heard the food is really good there now. I haven't, I haven't eaten it. The ramen's pretty good there, too. I, I, yeah, I had a ramen bowl. We watched Jets Hockey there one night, and uh, I tried the turtle fries, and it was a band. It's, like, it's a good venue. It's it is a very good, good venue. Come yeah. on, check it out. Chris and I went and played an open night. Like, oh, yeah? Open mic, sorry, for Manitoba music. With the Big Free Yeti songs? Or? No, well, yeah, yeah a couple two, of them. Two-thirds. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so some, I mean, people listening to this will be hearing some songs throughout, so they'll get an idea of what, what you sound like if they haven't heard you before. Sweet. But if someone wants to find out more info, like, you know, maybe they're hearing this three months after the show and they yep. want to know where they can hear, find out about more shows, things like that, what's the best? Facebook. Facebook? Yeah, so we'll, we'll get yeah. something up on Bandcamp, and Bandcamp then we're, is... we're actually going to, we'll release it. Like, we'll, we'll go through the Spotify and the All iTunes the, yeah, yeah. if we're going to... It's also the manager. For the first time ever. For the first time You can mail into our fan club. <laughs> yeah, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be your address. You can send, you send some stickers. And yeah. shit. Actually, let's send it to your parents. Hairs. Let's send it to your parents. Yo, actually, just, I mean, I, I was trying to wrap it up, but I'm not going to wrap it up now because yeah, yeah. that, that brought something to mind. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine about fan clubs today yeah. and how it's weird that you look at the back of every tape you bought in the 90s and it would be right to the fan club. Yeah. Yeah. And Pearl Jam's fan club is still active. And you pay... 40 bucks and you get shit sent to you. Yeah, you get like... And it's like, like they've been doing that since since 91. Like, that's... Cool. It's, it still exists, yeah. So, I mean, they send you like seven issues and stuff. That is Just, wicked. Like, that, I don't think anyone does that anymore, do they? Like I, That's like a secret only the fans would know and everyone listening to the podcast now. Yeah. Well, you we idiots. haven't done the artwork yet, so we can always add that in there. The fan club information. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the fan yeah. club, yeah. I just kind of wish more bands would do that. Like, it's yeah. cool. I mean, I'm not going to pay 40 bucks. I like Pearl Jam fine, but I'm not going to pay 40 bucks. Even to, get, 40 bucks. Even to but, get that newsletter from Pearl Jam. They, they do make an That is freaking yeah. cool, it's man. Cool, yeah. yeah. It is pretty cool. I didn't even thought about that, man. And I, you I, used to young, I used to And I used to belong to that fan club. You were in the 10 club? I remember going... I yeah, still I would, the first time I ever saw them would have been Fargo. Okay, like when they played because they, they had never come here. So I yeah, remember, I remember well except for Sunfest. Sunfest back, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, airstrip there yeah. in Gimli. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I was I'm sorry, I just had a flashback because I was still like I was still in the fan club. Yeah, and that was binaural, I think, or in in and around there. So that's like early two thousands, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Anyways, did you get free shit? I did get free shit. They used to do like they would record right. They would um, all of their like live concerts. Right? Yeah. yeah, and they would like. Send I remember when they released all of them, and I bought one of them, and I was like, "I'm going to buy all these." And then I was like, "No, I'm not." <laughs> I have one. I have the song six times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can get your city. It's nostalgia, though, man. That's the story. Like I, yeah. I was in the Lego fan club back in the day. What'd let's, you get from that? Let's talk I got about a hat. That. It's all right. And I was in the Star Wars fan club. That was pretty cool. You could have sent away for one of those cool jackets Luke had in Empire Strikes Back. That is cool, actually. That would have been pretty cool. That is cool. You can get a real Yeti pelt you know vest what? You know in what? the Bigfoot Yeti fan club. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say something random about this new Star Wars video game that I was playing with my buddy the other day. Okay. 
Like, Luke looks like mean. He's got, like, scars on his lip and all this stuff. Mark Hamill does not look like that. I feel like the video game people, like, tried to mean him up. They tried yeah. to make him look tougher than he actually is. Well, he looks is. very friendly. He, he just in general. Right? Hamill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, Dark and gritty reboot. Come over for dinner. I'll, <laughs> yep. make, I'll make you some risotto, maybe. <laughs> well, we promise Paul won't look that <laughs> scarred up. <laughs> All right, I am actually going to wrap this up now. Yeah, okay, um, so Facebook page is the best spot to go for <laughs> yeah, show right now. information and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah okay. the, gra- the gram. Okay, and yeah. then the band camp will be where the, the EP is out. Yeah. And then everywhere else, too. Spotify yeah. and all that stuff. Yes. And send it into the wild. Be free, yetis. Cool, cool. And then if people want to hear more episodes of this show, go to wishpolice.com. All 300 and whatever episodes are there for free download and streaming, including the past two that these guys have been on. And you are on one of the live ones, too. Yeah, man. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always, fun. It's this was fun. fun. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And then also, also tune in on uh, Sundays at midnight to UMFM, and you can hear old episodes of the show. So it might not be till like four months after we recorded this, but all of a sudden at midnight, the prime time to be listening to the radio. It'll I pop love on, radio. Pop on the air. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Thanks Shout for out to UMFM. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. You say I'm not enough You say I'm not enough And I pick you
broke it right into 